what are the, some of the challenges you faced as an engineering student and how did you overcome them? Because I, I know there's a lot of people on this channel who want to be engineers. And I know engineering is a really hard major because you have these projects and you have these classes and the professors sometimes like, I, I don't want to talk bad about anyone, but like I've heard <laughs> stories, right? Like there's some really hard tests and really hard assignments and just really high expectations. Yeah. So this is a really good question. I think anyone that's currently in an engineering program is going to relate to what I'm about to say is unfortunately your social life, your social life becomes studying with your engineering friends, your engineer, your, your peers. Right. So a lot of my social life got cut immensely, probably like 80, 90% of my social life was gone. Right. But it's just, <laughs> you're laughing, but it's no, true. no. Cause it's the same here. Right. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a choice, right? There were certainly, uh, average students that, were able to juggle a bunch of different things at once. Uh, but I, I, I refuse to be average. I refuse to just go to class and do a few assignments and go home. I wanted to extract as much as possible out of the program, um, which I think is for those that, you know, choose to pursue something outside of their comfort zone. You might as well just go all in, right? But as far as the, the major struggles for me, uh, we're definitely juggling so many different subjects that are completely different than each other right so one moment you're studying fluid mechanics the other moment you're studying um statics dynamics which are completely different classes and i'm just saying the beginning right towards the end you have vibrations you have controls you have uh heat transfer right which are very difficult classes and just having to switch your brain instantly the same day to a different subject i think is one of the, the hardest things right as much as the background and the way to tackle the problems is very similar throughout the whole set of disciplines. You do have the challenge of juggling a lot of hard subjects at once, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it was for the for you and you know your math degree and, and graduate degree, um, but what I noticed from my friends is that a lot of them neglected um, basic habits right which is something that i do not recommend for anyone that's out there and when i say about that and i'm not sure if you can relate to this is so many people would just forget to eat you know they would get you know four hours of sleep every day and then get sick every week um and i don't think that's a really good thing right so yeah. Yeah. definitely something to watch out for right mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think yeah. that the whole thing with the different subjects, I tried to um I kind I kind of tried to embrace it, you know, because I would be taking like a combinatorics class and then I would take a partial differential equations class and then a linear algebra class. And then I'd have a fourth class that was kind of like a fluff class because I was on financial aid and back then when I was in school, uh, as long as you were full time, you can get full financial aid and you were allowed to take classes outside your major. So I took a couple classes outside my major, which made it easier for me, but they changed the rules in the US now. And I think that I'm pretty sure like in order to get full financial aid, all the classes you have to take have to be in your major. So if you're a math major or if you're an engineering major, that means to be full time, you might have to take four super hard classes. And mm -hmm. that is killer. I mean, the most I could ever do was three. And you, you talked about social life game over. Uh, you know, when I took advanced calculus, that was it. That was it. It was over, you know, Goodbye, girlfriend. Goodbye, friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was all over. I mean, and not by choice. Just, you know, um, you know, you have to make sacrifices and you make decisions and and you live with yeah. them, right? You do the best you can. So, yes. Um, yeah. And I think I don't know how it is for math majors, but unfortunately for engineering majors, if you want to work in the field and you want to pursue something, um you know, I'll just give a random example, right? Let's say you want to work for NASA. You want to seek an internship as early as possible in the process, right? And when you seek an internship, a lot of times you're juggling the internship and classes, right? Because otherwise you're going to be behind in the program, right? So for a lot of us, it was very hard to juggle getting experience, 
taking hard classes and also getting enough sleep you know so i remember i chose somewhat of a mixed route i did both internship and i also got research experience um, this is something I wanted to do just because I wanted to get exposure to both before I made a decision on what I wanted to do right after graduating, right? But I had a lot of friends, and I'm sure you had students too, that um, they would work part-time as an internship and take classes at the same time. Uh, for me, I chose to take a whole summer off. And here in the U.S., guys, for those of you that are not from you know familiar with the system, in the summary, sometimes you can take classes. Um, it's good to take classes because then you get ahead and you don't get as many, you don't get as overwhelmed, I should say, right? But I took a whole summer off just to dedicate to an internship. And um, that put me behind. So towards the end of the program, I was taking five engineering classes every semester. Wow. Right? So mm -hmm. talk about your struggles to take four at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine five, right? Um, which is, you know, not... I mean, it's it, it's common, but not recommended, right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a struggle. I had a friend who um, he was one of my internet friends. We used to chat online. His name is Jeff. That was his real name, and I actually met him in real life. <laughs> yeah, his, his, his internet... you and your internet friends, but <laughs> this is besides the point. <laughs> his his internet name was um, Akusarujin, and okay. uh, yeah, he was really cool. And I met him, um, and he was a computer science major, mm -hmm. and he was getting C's because he got a job doing like some computer science stuff. And I was like, man, you can't, you can't be doing this, right? Like you gotta get good grades. Like, you know, what's going on? Like focus on getting A's, it's all that matters. And so he got C's, he got his degree, and I'm not saying C's are good, but this is just a story. Cause right, kinda, right. he got his degree and right out of college, he was making like 75 or 80. And then last I heard, this has been, it's been like a decade, okay. He got a job in Colorado making like 120, and this is like 10 years ago. 120k right, right? which so, is a lot of money for 10 years ago imagine now there would be probably like i don't know 150 160 probably mm -hmm. if not more yeah so he really focused on on getting the job skills and just barely got by the grades and he ended up doing okay now i don't know if that's going to work for everyone but like it's just an interesting story of someone who did mediocre in college like he didn't do great because he was working right. so much and he yes. had to work he was in a situation where um i'm sure you know in the u.s like if your parents make too much money you can't get financial aid and too much money is really not a lot of money like you have to yes. be really really poor yes super poor and his parents weren't rich but like they couldn't really help him with college so he kind of had to work and live with roommates and it was it was a real struggle for him but like yeah it worked out i'm really happy it did so so just to expand a little bit more on what you just said right um there are a lot of students that are average by choice but a lot of them are average you know as far as getting c's because they just can't right they it's just a condition however i found that the people that i encountered that got c's because of a condition and not because of choice right mm -hmm. they they typically uh got out of school with very good jobs, very high paying jobs, and a lot of times making more than those that were getting A's mm -hmm. because they just had a different kind of focus, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you have a focus, whether that's getting a lot of internship experience, whether that is, you know, just getting a lot of research experience, you should be good. 